Hello again. I hope things are going well with you, that you are having an awesome day. Thank you for taking the time to check out how things are going with my February makeup bag. Um, I wanted to go on and do a, a makeup bag recap so that way, since we have a short month, that way I can go on and get the March bag and, and those get ready with me is coming because I'm ready to kind of switch out some things because I've been able to finish a couple products and I'm on kind of the last little um, couple of uses with some others. So let's get to it. I'm still um, focusing everything around the Cap on Demi Vita Look a Remix palette. In particular, this look I cannot get enough of. It's a variation of the MAC inspired spice chocolate. Get ready with me. I'll go on and link the original video in the card above as well as the description box below. But like I said, it's it's kind of another variation take on it and it would also work if you are wanting some use out of your um, Too Faced Peanut Butter and Jelly Palette, the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette, um, the Lorac Pro 3, Mega Pro 3, pardon me, not the, not the Pro 3, the Mega Pro 3 that has more of the warmer shades. And even if you have the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, this is very easy to recreate with a lot of the shades in there. It's just really, really fun. I have a coppery shade all over my lid, um, soft, warm brown in the crease. I went with more of a reddish shade in my um, outer corner crease area. And then I have a shimmery kind of a white goldish highlight on my brow bone and in my inner corner super super easy and like i said i just can't get enough with it it matches with literally every single thing i mean i'm wearing it with a blush pink shirt today i wear it with navy with black with brown like this is my favorite look so far of anything i've ever worn out of the cat on dmv to look a remix palette and it's like i said it's super easy to recreate because warm shadows are very trendy right now. You probably have a lot of the similar um, things in your collection. So very, very easy. Highly recommend. And then I'm wearing a purple on my lower lash line, but I've also changed it. I've worn a blues on my lower lash line. I've worn greens on my lower lash line. Um, I've stuck with browns on my lower lash line. Like I said, this look works with everything. So enough about that. Let's go on into the rest of the makeup. As far as foundation combos, I went through a couple of things to kind of figure out what I liked because the focus of foundation, I wanted to be the Clinique Even Better Glow Light Reflecting Makeup. I have the shade in Alabaster. I believe it's shade CN10. I really like this foundation, so I tried it with two different options to kind of prime my skin um, slash give some hydration during the day. So the first combination I tried for about the first portion of the month was the It Cosmetics Feel the Moment um, Skin Rejuvenating Hydrating Primer Serum. And I liked it at the beginning of the month back when we were still dealing with a little bit of cold weather. But once the temperature started warming up and stayed kind of on the higher end, I didn't like these two in combination with each other because um, even just the smallest amount of the serum mixed in with the foundation caused it to separate all over my skin. So not the best combination. I ended up, you know, just kind of using this in combination with the Clarins Serum at night. Um, and that seemed to work out better for me um, so that I can go on and finish the tiny bit that's left in this bottle. So I'll kind of come back to it at a later date. The combination that I love that I'm actually wearing today is a mix of the Clinique Foundation with the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Light Infusing Primer. I pour one pump of the Light Infusing Primer onto the back of my hand with a little bit of the foundation and I mix it with a dampened beauty sponge. I love the finish of this combo together. So kind of a uh, food for thought if you're looking to shop your stash and, and figure out a new foundation combo. The other thing that I really enjoyed with it I wanted to make some major progress with my MAC MSF in the shade Light. I have gotten down to the last little bits of this product. Um, I found that the best way for this foundation to work in combination with that Clinique liquid foundation, because I mean, you can wear this on its own. I prefer using it as a setting powder. Um, I took an e.l.f. fluffy C brush and I would lightly set the areas before buffing it into my skin so that the, the foundation would not kind of move and and um, change placement all over my skin. So I really like the combination of these two together. I am wearing this powder currently. I really like it and I'm deciding to um, go on and just finish this off along with two other powders for my March makeup bag. So that's really, really exciting that I'm gonna be able to move out a couple more powders out of my collection. So. I've really realized, um, again, and I've heard this from you with panning videos and whatnot, once you get past the dome on these MAC MSFs, it's really easy to hit pan because it seems like the dome is kind of the cusp of that product and then after that it's just 
flat lining and moving it out. So really, really good food for thought if you're looking to kind of um, move some powders out of your collection you have MAC. Then the next thing let's talk about, let's go through some lip products. I should have included this tip in my um, products that change my routine video. I'll go on and link that one in the card above because I just talked about some things like my makeup bag and, and different um, household items that have really just changed the game for me. This is another system that I'm using and these are just snack bags from Ziploc. You can pick them up at your local grocery store. But I have been using these for the past couple of months to put lip combinations together so that I'm a little bit more diligent about rotating through my makeup um, because it's easy to just grab this out of my clear makeup storage drawers and my backup stash and I have matching lip liners that go with the lipstick if I have a gloss. Um, right now this happens to be one of my only glosses but it just makes it easy like I said to rotate through my products. So um, at the beginning of the month, I was wearing a Jeffree Star inspired look from his new blood sugar palette that he just um, released out onto the market. So I'll link that in the card above. Um, but with that look before Valentine's Day and on Valentine's Day, I really wanted to stick with the whole theme. And so I chose a red lipstick. In particular, I wore my MAC lip liner in the shade Cherry along with an old MAC lipstick from the retro matte collection called Damn Glamorous. I really just kind of wanted to evaluate this lipstick and see if it's still worth hanging on to or if it's getting too old to um, kind of keep around. It still has a little bit of life in it. I wore it for about two weeks and then after Valentine's Day I was just ready to kind of go back into this easy wearable my lips but better kind of vibe um, along with the eye makeup but um, I did enjoy wearing this along with that cherry lip liner but the ones that I got the most wear out of was this my lips but better kind of bad I'm really trying to move through some of these lip products in particular my bite beauty lipstick in the shade chai um, I got down just about to the bottom of this lipstick so I've decided to toss it into my purse um, to use for on-the-go touch-ups because I always have a cup of coffee or a bottle of water and so I reapply my lipstick fairly consistently throughout the day and then in the morning when I'm putting all my makeup it's actually what I have on currently it is the exact dupe to that Bite Beauty chai lipstick and this is from Bobbi Brown in the shade Brownie so this is what it looks like I combine it with my MAC Whirl lip liner in fact let me show you I was able to finish off um, the pencil that I had. I got it to be so teeny tiny that it actually fits inside the cap now. So I'm working on the last Whirl lip liner that I have in my collection. So here's the brand new one in comparison. One of the things, say what you want about MAC, but I do really appreciate that when it comes to their pencil products, you can sharpen them all the way down to the very, very last snub, especially when we talk about eyeliners in just a minute. I know that it can be kind of pricey to buy MAC products, but literally you can get them down to the very last snub. Like my MAC World Lip Liner that's inside that cap, I was able to sharpen it down to the W before it would not sharpen anymore. That is a serious bang for your buck. So, you know, that one thing can be said, like MAC products, they, they really give you the value for your money. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, because I have worn this a lot, um, I actually picked this up during the month after watching one of Ashley's vlogs. She's known as Texas Mommy of Boys, so I'll link her channel in the description box below. But she got me intrigued about this Marc Jacobs lip lacquer in Ch -ch Changes. It's a lip gloss. I really, I'm not a lip gloss fan. Like, I really just got to a point where... Um, I wore it when I started panning several years ago because I had a lot of buxom lip glosses, but I, I realized that I like them popped only in the center of my lips. I don't like to cover my entire lip area with it. So um, in particular, this lip gloss, the reason it intrigued me is because it has a duochrome effect. There's a slight blue shimmer shift on top of it being kind of a my lips but better shade. So I'm wearing it on the center of my lips. I don't know if the camera's going to do it justice with the kind of the blue glitter. I have it on the center of my lips topped on the Bobbi Brown Brownie lipstick. So um, it was definitely worth picking up. And at first I was kind of like, I have the Clinique lipstick in the shade Surprise, which has more of a, I don't want to call it a greenish shift, but it's like, it's a mauve color like this, but it has a little bit more gold in some lights and a little bit more green. It sounds very strange. Hence, surprise! Um, but it's a really pretty color. It's good. It's one of the ones I'm going to bring out for my March makeup bag, so I'll show you that 
in the next video, but um, I was intrigued that this was kind of on the cooler tone side of it being blue. It is quite flattering um, on my skin tone and, and pairing it, it doesn't make my teeth look real yellow. So it was definitely a worthwhile purchase. And I do like the fact that this lip gloss is not sticky. It, it, it does stay very smooth. Um, I don't feel like my lips are gonna constantly be getting in the way of things where I've got products just kind of sliding around being disgusting everywhere. So definitely was worth checking out for me. And down to both the bottom of the Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Eyeliners. <clears throat> and this is why, you know, again, it got me thinking about in comparison to like a MAC liner, because these are getting to the point where I cannot sharpen them anymore. They won't turn in my sharpener. Um, I sharpened the Striking Copper after I used it today because this pencil is on the older side. It's drying out quite a bit. It's separating from the sides, but I've been using it as a shadow base because I love it under the, um, what is that shade called? Harpsichord shade from the Kat Von D Movie to Logo Remix. Or if you have the Peanut Butter and Jelly Palette from Too Faced, it looks just like peanut brittle. So um, I'm down to the bottoms of these, um, but like I said, when you compare them like with a MAC pencil and you can get down to the very, very bottom, um, in terms of value for our money, that's really fascinating to me because it feels like you actually get more value um, out of the MAC pencil than you do paying, you know, a fraction of the price to get the Maybelline. So I don't know, just food for thought, but almost on the last legs, I love wearing this purple liner on my lower lash line set with the Anthem shade from the Mi Vita Loca Remix palette. And then this one I've been using as a shadow base because I just, I want to get my use out of it before it is completely dried out. So um, if I wear this particular look a couple more times, this is going to be done because I can't sharpen it anymore. Um, in terms of what I've brought in to substitute for the purple pencil, um, when I picked up the Marc Jacobs gloss, I also decided to kind of spend what was left of my points and I got one of those long comb um, sets and I it, one of it was the drama liquid pencil in the shade. I'm assuming this is just amethyst. There's no shade name on here um, It's a lighter version of that Maybelline Waterproof pencil and there's a slight bit of shimmer, but it is kind of fun to wear it on the lower lash line It's what I have on combined with that anthem shade today. So fun times. Oh, I forgot to talk about this um, a concealer Combination that I really loved I threw in this NYX Waterproof concealer in the shade light because this is a big time favorite for me. I love it for tattoo coverage I love it for under eye coverage. It's a really thick concealer So I always make sure to warm it up between my fingers and apply it to my eyes However, that being said I was walking through Walmart uh, I was about two weeks ago and I saw the brand found and I was really intrigued by their color correcting concealers There were three or four colors because I want to say there was a green a yellow the purple and then I believe there was a peach I don't remember off the top of my head but because of allergies kind of kicking back up again and the weather warming up I've really kind of dealt with deeper dark circles than normal um, so I was really intrigued and this product in particular has a squeeze tube applicator like so but what I've realized I love doing is I squeeze the tiniest little bit onto the back of my hand and then I also squeeze a tiny little bit of the NYX concealer mix them together and apply them with a dampened beauty sponge. The combination of these is wonderful because it thins out this concealer just enough where it's a little bit more malleable on the skin, but also I get a little bit more of the brightening effects instead of just being a really heavy concealer. So I recommend that tip. Um, if you're suffering from allergies or you're kind of wondering how to, to get some more use out of your concealer, because like I said, at first I was, you know, kind of like, eh, I don't know if it's going to work for me, but it's an affordable concealer. It works really well. Um, I don't like it on its own because when I put it on its own on my skin, it was like a little too intense in the brightening effects. So mixed with the concealer, it's really, really nice. And it kind of helped this one to not move around my Clinique foundation. So worth your time to try it out and see if it's going to work for you. And then um, I also made some more progress in terms of brow pencils. Um, I purchased the Total Temptation Brow Definer from Maybelline. I thought that this pencil would last me a little bit longer because it's a thicker um, tip than going with like a micro brow pencil, but I am at the end of this. So pretty much I've realized in terms of filling in my brows, um, each brow pencil is gonna last me about a month. So I'm gonna have a different um, drugstore option to try out and I'll let you know how it goes. But I did really like this. The one thing I will say though is um, 
as I applied it to my eyebrows, I've noticed that some of my eyebrow hairs fall out. So a little weird. I don't know if it's just like having the thicker pencil and it like rubs against the, the natural hairs of my brow. I don't know. Cause I do have to fill in my brows. Um, I wouldn't say substantially, but I do have thyroid issues. And so the ends of my brows are very, very sparse. And even I have some sections in the inner portions of my brows that I do have to fill in. So um, I don't necessarily want to go with a pomade because it's a little too strong for what I want for an everyday look. I prefer to have a pencil or even to go with eyeshadow. So, um, so far so good. I like it. But every time I look at it and I'm like, I see a little bit of the, the hairs come out. It's just a little disconcerting. So I don't know, something to think about. And then at mascara. Um, I ended up falling back into kind of one of my old favorite habits of wearing a blue mascara. So I wanted something extremely affordable. I picked up the Hard Candy Blue Mascara from Walmart. It's the Be Bold Color Mascara in Deep Dive. It's a really brightening blue shade, but I love pairing it over black mascara because it makes the whites of my eyes really bright and vibrant. It definitely takes a lot of the fatigue. Um, tiredness out of my skin, especially since we're starting to battle allergy season. Um, and so in terms of wearing it on a daily basis, I am actually wearing it today on my upper and lower lash line layered on top of the Bobbi Brown travel size mascara in the smoky eye version. I mean, it's, it's, it's a decent mascara, nothing to write home about. Um, it works okay. I don't know. We'll see. But I have these two on in combination today and I really like the effect of, of having a little bit of volume but like I said, it's really more of a focus on making my eyes really bright and awake. And also, this is a tip. Um, I wanted to share this because this is something I do to make green eyeshadow a little bit more flattering since we're going into um, the March makeup and St. Patrick's Day and all that. I'm really going to be focused on the green shades out of the Kat Von D, Maybe to look a remix palette. So blue mascara and green mascara in particular um, help make a lot of those really green tones a little bit more flattering because otherwise they can make my skin tone look a little bit sallow um, just because of all the yellow. It's, it's not necessarily the most flattering, but this is a tip to make those work a little bit better. So I wanted to share that with you. And then um, off blush. <laughs> I cannot get enough of this blush. This is the Clinique Cheek Cola Pop or Cheek Pop in the shade Cola Pop. But I'm curious, how long has it taken for you to get past the floral design if you've ever painted one of these? Because I've had this blush two years. I've, I've used it so much. And even in the last couple of months, I mean, it's been pretty much everyday use and I'm still looking at this floral design. So I'm curious if it goes all the way down to the bottom of the blush, or if it's just me realizing that this, this is gonna be like the most slow going product ever that I've ever panned. I mean, I enjoy the color, I love it. I'm wearing it on my cheeks today. And like I said, I just can't get enough of it. But every time I open it up and use it, I'm like, when is it gonna be the day that I'm gonna wear down this flower pattern? Cause it's taking forever, so I love it. And then I also brought out a second blush because in the Get Ready With Me's coming up, I really wanted to focus on a softer, um, easier, like a little bit cooler toned eye. And so I pulled out my NYX blush, NYX Ombre blush in the shade um, Mauve Me. I didn't wear it a ton, just a couple of times because I really wanted my focus to be on this Clinique blush, but I really like the formula of this. It's super nice if you wanted to have um, a lighter highlight, the top shade of the ombre works really well for that. I tend to just swirl mine together and then I'm going through with my Kat Von D palette to highlight so that, that way the, the cohesiveness comes from my eyes down to my cheeks and the rest of my face. But this is really a lovely formula. And then a bronzer, I have been working on my Too Faced travel size version of the Chocolate Soleil. Um, I really just, I love the color. Still not a fan of the fragrance, but I have noticed that now after pretty much a month and a half. Have I used this for two months? I don't remember if I used it last month or if I used the NARS one, but the scent isn't as strong. So I really appreciate that it's kind of died down a little bit. Um, I have made a pretty significant dip in it, but still no pan. So I'm going to continue working on this and see what I can do with it in the future. So other than that, I'm still working on the same nude pencil for my waterline. It feels like this never ends. This is the MAC, um, uh, Studio Chromographic Pencil in NC15 NW20. I mean, I've had it so long, like the writing is wearing off. I'm not going to know what it is in like three months. And then I'm on the last legs of my NYX white eyeliner. So when I finish this, I'm going to go into my NYX Jumbo Eye Shadow Pencil in Milk that I've had in my collection. I've used it a handful of times, but as you can see, it's starting from brand new. So I'm going to go on and move that out of my collection. And then, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot. 
Um, my MAC Costa Riche liner, I'm on the last little dregs of this. I love using this and setting it with Fox from the Kat Von Nimi Vita Loca Remix palette. I actually have it on my upper lash line today. It's one of my very favorite espresso liners of all time. And again, look at how far down I've been able to use this product and they're still easy to sharpen. I know that I've got a couple weeks worth of usage left. So it's definitely worth the value for your money if you buy a MAC pencil and you use it. Don't let it dry out, but use it um, pretty consistently from the day that you bring it home. You will be super happy with the value that you get for your money. So, oh yeah, what a setting spray. I totally forgot about that. Um, this is something that I talked about at the beginning of the month, reviewing for Octoly. I'm still in love with it. It is the Ofra Makeup Fixer Light Mist Setting Spray. This has been really, really nice. The one thing I will say, be careful about spraying this if you're setting your face after applying mascara. Um, I've realized that I need to wait about five to maybe even 10 minutes after applying my mascara to make sure it's completely dry so that I don't have any flaking and running mascara down onto the rest of my face. But other than that, this has been a lovely, lovely product to wear. My makeup stays all day long. And I will even say, it has been really nice because for my workouts in the evening, I um, am in Taekwondo and my makeup holds up quite well despite all the sweating during class. And I know that a large part of it is due to having this fantastic setting spray. So definitely worth the value for your money, especially since you're getting double the typical size that we normally get when we buy um, setting spray, since you're getting eight fluid ounces in this bottle as opposed to the normal four or even a little less than four. So like I said, um, go on and, and check the description box below. I will link you to the Octoly website so you can check it out for yourself, but it is also definitely worth the time if you're wanting a, a really big bang for your buck. The only thing is if you want to change up your products a lot, this is a setting spray that you have to commit to because it's such a large scale bottle. So that's the only downside I find to that product. But other than that, thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time. I wish you all the best, that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, I hope that you have a blast doing your makeup and shopping your stash. I know it's been incredibly invigorating for me to be able to find gems within my collection and um, shake them up and mix them around to make things that are looks that are really on trend. Like I said, with this eye look, it's very reminiscent of a lot of things that people are talking about at the moment. And it feels good to know that I can go back into this um, a palette that's been sitting in my collection for a couple of years, along with a lot of these other items like the blush and whatnot. So take care, have a fantastic rest of your day. I will have those get ready with me's in the works and then my March makeup bag is coming soon. So till then, I shall see you later. Bye.